right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, yesterday we were discussing uh, and the House of Representatives. Yes. Do you need me to write your name on this? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we did the uh, non voting members uh, of Puerto Rico, Samoa, District of Columbia, Guam, Virgin Islands. Okay. As I said, they can participate in discussions, but they have no vote. Some of them may be able to vote in committee. Okay. So the next thing we want to look at, we're still talking about the House of Representatives, and that is the leadership. Which, if you go to page 74 in your book, the leadership of the House is printed there. Yeah? Yes. Okay. I got my current book. <laughs> Okay. Oh, by the way, if you're on page 174 at the top, Patrick Leahy, uh, the Senate President Pro Tempore, has decided he is not seeking re-election. That was news yesterday. Okay. All right, but we're looking at the House, and obviously, at the top of the list, numero uno, the big chief, Nancy Pelosi is the Speaker of the House. Okay? Now, guys. The Speaker of the House in the House of Representatives is like a dictator. Nothing happens in the House unless Nancy wants it to happen. Period. Now, as uh, Heidi was talking about yesterday, she uh, was in 4-H. Is that a question? Um, and they practice what's called parliamentary procedure. Okay, so this is a process of holding a meeting, but that's what they use on the floors of the House and the Senate in parliamentary procedure. So you do not address other members in person, back and forth. You don't have debates on the floor between two people. Okay, you're speaking to the chair or the president, whoever's serving that day. Okay, and when you did it, Heidi, you were called what? Madam President, okay? So that sounds pretty similar to what you're going to hear in the House, which is you have to be recognized by the President in order to speak, okay? So you seek recognition. If you get recognized, you may speak, okay? So I am not going to speak Okay, to the Democrat, Mr. Latham from Kansas. Okay, I'm not going to talk to him. But what I will say is, Madam President, my good friend, the Democrat from Kansas, Mr. Latham, seems to think that socialism is a good thing. I tend to differ. Okay, so I'm not speaking directly to you. I'm speaking about you. Through the chair, through the per president. Yes? Yeah. That's how parliamentary procedure works. Okay? Now, the speaker also interprets and applies the rules. The speaker interprets and applies the rules and decides which committees bills are sent to, okay? All right. Let's say we introduce a bill, okay? Uh, Representative Latham from Kansas introduces a bill. What's the bill about, Andrew? Um, ranches? Legalization of opioids. Okay. Legalization of Drugs. Opioids. Opioids. Okay. So, Nancy Pelosi gets to choose which committee that bill goes to for consideration. 
because remember, we all have these standing committees on page seven. seven, the second one. Now, let's look at the House committees here. And opioids, would that go to agriculture, banking, financial services, transportation, conduct, science, resources? Which one will we send out? Science. Uh, the one that I have the most friends in, and then I'm going to do the next. Oh, wait a second. Well, do you think Nancy likes this bill? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. that's really where it matters. If Nancy likes the bill, she's going to send it to a committee where the chairman likes the bill. Okay? Now, let's say the Science, go with the science committee. Okay. Now, I think agriculture would probably be a, a better one to do it because opioids are grown, right? Yeah. So, probably the correct place is agriculture or maybe um, government reform or energy science. and natural resources. Yeah, they don't. Okay. So, <laughs> So she's going to send this to which one? Science. Science. Yes. Okay. Now, let's say there are 15 members on the science committee in the House. Yes? yes. The chair, who has more seats on this committee, Republicans or Democrats? Democrats. Okay, there's eight Democrats, seven Republicans, and the chair is a what? Democrat. Democrat. Okay. Now listen, this is so important to the process. <coughs> because if Nancy doesn't like this bill, she sends it to a committee chairman that doesn't like the bill, like the agriculture. So if she sends it over here to the ag committee, if she doesn't like it, the chair, also a Democrat, is going to not put it on the calendar. Okay, there's the calendar. Calendar over here. Okay, and what's the date today? 16. November 16th. This is going on the calendar for November 17th. This chairman likes it. It goes right on the calendar. Over here, this chair doesn't like it. It never goes on the calendar. It sits on his desk. And it never sees the light of day again. Nancy Pelosi controls the fate of every piece of legislation introduced into the House because she knows all those committee chairmen because she's the one that gave them their job. Remember, if you want to be on a certain committee, who gets to choose which committee you go on? Your leadership, right? So Nancy <coughs> gave you that job as the chair, and she knows you don't like it, she doesn't like it, and she tells you you don't like it either. Now, there's a political science term for that. Sending a bill to a committee chair that you know will not put it on the calendar is where most bills die. And it is called a pigeonhole. So this, when I say it's like a dictatorship, it's like a dictatorship, okay? They had to start a dictatorship not become the president, but become the speaker. Well, you control the purse. That's right. Okay. What else can she do? Well, as I said, as I said before, she assigns members to committee. Now, Nancy only signs Democrats, right? She assigns those people to those committees. Now, who becomes the chair of the committee is done differently in different committees and different parties. So the Republicans, for like highly competitive committees that people want to be on, they'll have elections <coughs> for, to see who's going to be the chair. Okay, Democrats oftentimes use seniority. So the person that's been on the committee the longest is the chair. And then you wind up with people like Jerry Nadler and... And what's that other pencil neck's name? Uh, 
pencil neck. You know what I'm talking about? Adam Schiff. You wind up as these guys in chair of these important committees because of seniority. Not the best person for the job. Okay. Follow me. Okay, uh, you guys know that members of the House and the Senate don't have to vote if they vote. You know what I mean? Yes. Like they're out of town or they're running for president. What happens? Okay. Uh, so, Nancy, the speaker, does have to vote in the case that it will create a tie or break a tie. She has to be there for the vote. So, if it's going to be a close vote, she needs to be there. Okay. Now, for 200 plus years of Congress, you had to be present in the room to vote. During COVID, Nancy changed the rules that you could vote from, from not, be, not there. Okay. Now, I think, I, I don't know if you can still do that right now, or I'm not sure. Okay. All right. So, you got a pretty good idea what the speaker does, yeah? Very powerful. Now, we'll talk about the majority leader which is the second in command of the majority party. And that, of course, is Steny Boyer of Maryland. Okay. So he's the right-hand man of Nancy. Okay. Um, what you would describe him as a legislative strategist. Majority leader is a legislative strategist. Well, somebody that figures out, okay, which bills do we want to bring up? Which ones have a chance of passing? Um, you know, working with the president, uh, if, if that's your party, okay? Uh, or even if it's not your party, working with the president about, you know, what are the most pressing items that need to come up? Uh, and then once uh, a bill comes to the floor, like it makes it that far, uh, making sure it, it moves appropriately. So, uh, just like the right hand man. Okay. Let's stay with the majority. Okay. So, the next position with the majority is the majority whip. Okay. And as you can see, uh, Senator James, or not Senator, uh, James Clyburn is the uh, majority whip. Now, that's a, it's an interesting position. And the, the term actually helps describe what the position does. the personal whip. Yeah, uh, or uh, to vote for what the leadership wants. Have you ever heard the phrase twisting somebody's arm? Yeah. To get them to do something, twist their arm? Yeah. This is what a whip does, okay? Or, whoosh, you know, whoosh, whip you into shape to vote with what the leadership wants. Follow me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> hey. Um, <laughs> You would also call the whip a vote counter. So James Clyburn has his has his, you know his fingers on the pulse. He knows how many votes right now they have for this human infrastructure bill in the House. That's his job. So Nancy says, James, hey, how many votes do we have? That's his job to know. Do you have any Republican support for it? Uh, no. So do we have all the Democrats lined up we need? Uh, no. Well, you better get on that, James. You need to twist some arms. Okay. Now, what could Nancy do? Could she put political pressure on members of I on members of her caucus to vote with her and say, hey, you like that position you have on the agriculture committee? You want to keep that position on the agriculture committee? You will vote for this 1.75 billion human infrastructure bill. That they say he's going to fix inflation. Oh, no, you want to fix the inflation problem. We need to print something $1.75 trillion more dollars. Yeah, it makes all the sense in the world. Hey, yeah, 17 Pulitzer Prize winning uh, uh, economists agree. I'm sure one of them is your guy. <laughs> okay, sorry. Are we going to need another name? Who, what? 
Nancy Pelosi? Yes. <laughs> the rest of them? Some of them. Um, I watched like two episodes of that, and I said, nope. Uh, it's too new. Uh, racy, too, too much like sex, and like, uh, it's just like dis despicable human beings. You know, it's like, they're all despicable. It's like, I don't want to watch these despicable people. Stupid. Dumb. Awful. I'd rather watch Criminal Minds. <laughs> uh, right now I am. Because I can't find anything worth a damn to watch on. So, so, good people stopping bad people. So I'll need to know Speaker of the House. Yes. And I'll let you know. Okay. All right. Narcos is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Law and Order. Actually, Law and Order. Have you seen Law and Order? Special Victims. House, like the like doctor. The doctor one. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Law and Order. Texas Rangers. That one's good. Have you seen Psych? Cheese. Psych. Okay. Psych. I think it's so good. Yeah. 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 Okay. And. Better call Saul. All of it? Oh, okay. yeah. Wait okay. for them to release the next one. I am. No, those are the end. That's entertaining. I think I got through about five seasons. Okay. 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 Here's what I'm putting it on. Huh? Of what? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yes, I never it's the best TV, no, I, best TV I've seen in years. Okay. All right, let's go down to the minority. Okay. The minority leader. Minority leader, Kevin McCarthy. What does he do? Well, he gets to choose what committee his members are on. And, uh, yeah. Wait, so can you have a majority in any of these committees that can have the majority? Nope. Party? School committee. I see why it's not really important. Yep. Yeah. I remember when Todd Tehart used to represent the 4th District of Kansas. I got him to come talk to our students, actually to our seniors. We did it in the auditorium. And, uh, man, he was, I mean, he was just in a bad mood. He's like, he's on these committees, and he's like the chair of the committee. They won't even listen to him. It's, it's really frustrating. And that's when you see a lot of people retire. Like, when they're in the minority, they're like, screw this. This job sucks. So they, they quit. And I think Patrick Leahy knows what's coming in 2020. He's like, I'm not going to be in the party again. So he's leaving. Okay. No, I mean, you see that. And oh, by the way, I forget which state he was from. There's a Democratic member of the House that is switching parties. Oh, he's a Republican. Uh, he's not switching right now, but he's going to run as a Republican for the same seat. Can you switch? Yeah, oh, yeah. It has and does happen. It has and does. Well, can, as and can, will, and happen. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, minority leaders just don't really have a lot of power, and so you know what the minority whip. Yeah, this could be an important position. Steve Scalise, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like that guy. Okay, Steve Scalise. Uh, he was shot. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, was Steve he shot? Steve Scalise? Yeah, shot. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, I just, I like, he's kind of a no-nonsense guy. But um, I like him better than the other leaders in the Republican Party. Um, but anyhow, um, he does have a role to play here, yes, as far as keeping the Republicans together, yes? Him and McCarthy, really, okay? But he's the whip. Uh, good? Okay. And then committee chair. Okay, the other leadership position that we've already been talking about is the committee chair. which is always of which party? Always of the majority party. And they control what? They control what? The calendar. The calendar. And so most bills die on the desk of the chair, which is called what? Pigeonhole. Pigeonhole. 
introduced? They were introduced, sent to the committee. The committee didn't want to take it up. It dies. Listen. How much legislation dies over there? Most of it dies there. Oh, yeah. At least 80%. Probably more. At least. Yeah. Well, let's say you're Ron Estes and you introduce the bill to Congress. What's Nancy going to do with it? She's going to send it over to a committee and it's going to sit on the desk and nothing happens. <coughs> But you did your job, you introduced the bill. Now, what you could do is go talk to Nancy about the bill you want to pass. Chances are, you guys have different worldviews anyway, so it's probably not going to happen, but you never know. Now, what generally would happen in a perfect world is that Kevin McCarthy and Nancy Pelosi would talk to each other and um, talk about what's best for the country and try and pass some things through, okay? Now, the first infrastructure bill did get through. President Biden signed it into law. It's $1.25 trillion uh, yesterday. It got 16 votes in the Senate uh, for Republicans and uh, about that many in the House as well. Um, so you can call it a bipartisan infrastructure bill. I, I think you can do that. That's fair. Um, and for, for Joe Biden, this is a victory. Uh, one, he hasn't had many victories since he's been president, okay? Now, do we need infrastructure work done? And this, absolutely, okay? So, I mean, I don't know if this is a perfect bill. Uh, this will help provide jobs. This will help the economy uh, just by virtue of people working and money being spent, raw materials, and so forth. So, um, I, I, you know, it's a lot of money. You know, we're having inflation now. You know, there, there's pros and cons with this, but... It is a victory for the president, and I think he should be able to enjoy that. Yeah. Um, so that was just the infrastructure? Just the infrastructure, yeah. Which is mostly just infrastructure, not all of it. But yeah, you got to dig deep. Devil's in the details, okay? All right, so uh, that's the House. Let's talk about the United States Senate. What do you say? Come on. You want to know the differences, right? I think it's really something really Carrying that around? Yeah, yeah carrying that around. All right. Let me do some erasing here. How many members are there in the United States Senate? 100. Two from each state, yes. Okay, now, how long is the Senate term? Six years. Six years. Okay, now, 2022, 2024, 2026, 33, 33, 34, okay? So this is a contiguous body. All 100 senators are not up for election every six years. Third of them every two years are up for re-election. So, at any given time, you have at least 65 members, 66 members, that have worked together for at least two years. So that's what you would refer to as a contiguous body. Okay, you don't get a complete turnover or a large turnover in the Senate. Okay. Does that make sense? So what percentage of the Senate is up for election every two years? A third, yes. Now, originally these 100 senators were elected by state legislatures. But what amendment changed that? 17. Now they are elected by the people. All right, let's talk about qualifications. Very easy. Mention the states. Kansas. Google. Okay. Qualifications. How old do you got? 30. 30. Must you be a citizen of this country? Yes. How long? Seven for the House, nine for the Senate. Is there any reason why you can't be 
behind the citizenship requirement or the number of years? Well, yeah, obviously there's some reasoning. I don't know exactly what it was. And the final requirement for the Senate, you must live in the state that you represent. Which brings me to one of our former senators from Kansas, Pat Roberts, retired two years ago. When he went up for re-election eight years ago, I remember his opponent, the Republican challenger, saying that, uh, you know, Pat Roberts hasn't lived in Kansas in more than a decade. He has a house in Virginia. His kids went to school in Virginia. Graduated from high school in Virginia, Pat Roberts has an address in Kansas. And you know, I was tempted to, you know, vote for the other guy that wasn't Pat Roberts, and I did. But Pat Roberts won. Okay. He was a very powerful senator when he left office. I mean, he was, you can see, I think on one of those, he was on a bunch of committees and so forth. Is that still in your old, in that book? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, he was a pretty powerful senator uh, he, who became conservative in election years. Because you got, you know, you get elected, you got six years till you run again. So you can be Mr. Moderate or Mr. Liberal Rhino. Or, and then when it's election time in Kansas, you become Mr. Conservative. He was good at that. OK, what are we talking about? Leadership in the Senate. You know what that means? Yeah. Really? It's like the combination of both. What? Is that like what? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like a big board and they're like three. Really? What are we talking about? Rhino. You know what a rhino is in political science terms? So there's a baby you know, one. Political science term, I have no idea. There's a baby one at the zoo. Oscar. Which will be two and someone that just flips. Yeah, I don't know. Are you gonna draw the rhino? Oh, oh. Okay. oh please. No, hey. no, it's not a Republican, and then on the fifth. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I.E. Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney represents Wyoming. She's the only one because there's only one member of the House. Yes, this is Dick Cheney's daughter. She's an anti-Trump. This week, the Wyoming Republican Party voted to not allow her to claim she's a Republican. <laughs> She thinks she's going to run for president, which is kind of funny. Because she thinks secretly that all these Republicans really like her. Because the left wing media tells her that. She has no idea. She has a primary challenger. So she may not be going back to Washington. Probably multiple. Are you making a mess? He's staying with the desk. What are you talking about? It's red. Is it sticky? No. It's sticky. It's a little pink. This is why we can only have water. This is why we don't have nice things. I don't know. It could be No, it's going to be wet. It's going to be Okay. <laughs> they didn't do anything. No, these are completely dry. <laughs> you want? Yeah, I'll get this. Back. I got it. I got it. I got it. Make it up. Just a little water. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> Lily to the rescue. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Elbow oh, grease. Doesn't, doesn't doesn't like the golf ball. No way. Put some oil. So much water. Another 
you know, this no, night, stop. I have to interrupt class so much. I know. You guys can pick Nothing two new. <laughs> the president of the Senate. Vice president. Is the vice president. Kamala Harris, yes? Have you guys been paying attention to the news the last few days? No. Only speaking to the news that I want to look at. I want to go so, upstairs. I can't hear the voices of Fox News. So CNN, <laughs> CNN, left-wing CNN, wrote an article about how Kamala and her team, her, her chief of staff, are upset with the Biden administration. Because, like, he keeps giving her jobs that she can't, like, get wins on, like the border, right? Like, she's the border czar now, I guess, right? <laughs> and she's like, how the hell am I going to fix this, Joe? You know what I mean? This makes me look bad. So, like, there's a rift inside the White House between the president and vice president, okay? And so this is kind of interesting to, you know, watch, and, you know, all the talking heads got to weigh in on it, okay? And they're calling CNN, of all places, misogynistic, that they wrote that article because she's a woman. And she's a woman of color. And it's because they don't like women that CNN wrote that article. What? I'm confused. I am too. CNN is getting mad at Kamala Harris? No. The article in defense or in criticism of Kamala It wasn't really in criticism. It was more in her defense that she was upset Okay, so yesterday at the ceremony to sign the infrastructure bill, they're like going out of their way to like praise Kamala Harris over it. You know what I mean? Because they're trying to smooth this over. It's just kind of funny to watch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, really, like, and in, in the press secretary said some really nice things about her, and it's all just, it's like drama. For sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's all good. All right, uh, what are we talking about? Kamala Harris. Okay. So, um, now, she is the president of the Senate. Can she reside over the Senate anytime she wants? Yes. Yeah. Now, John Adams thought that's what he was supposed to do, like show up every day in the Senate. And those 26 men from their states were like, John, leave. Yeah, go away. We don't like you. <laughs> He felt really offended, actually. You know what I mean? He's like, what? I'm the president? No, you don't. Your only official duty here is what? Vote. To break tie votes. Okay? I know. Because <laughs> you're like, being the vice president, as Adam said, it's the most worthless job ever contrived by man. Okay? So, uh, I mean, Kamala just needs to, like, hey, do some things that, you know, make her look good and... Don't get bogged down and stuff. I mean, why, why, I don't know. If this, if the ship is sinking, maybe you don't want to be like right in the middle of it. Maybe you want to just be over here a little bit on the peripheral. Okay. Um, so, some vice presidents, guys, have had to vote and break tie vote. Some vice presidents have never had to do that. Okay. Um, now, they are not the equivalent of the Speaker of the House. You know what I mean? Like, they don't have that type of power in the Senate. Okay. One of the other things the Vice President does constitutionally do, and this is what's, what happened on January 6th, right? The whole, uh, like, the whole, what do they call the it? The story of the Capitol. The Capitol. The insurrection. Okay. The unarmed insurrection of the Capitol. Okay. And, um, So Mike Pence was supposed to read the Electoral College vote. That was his job that day, and it got interrupted. Okay. Now, this is a tough job for an outgoing vice president, but it's an even tougher job for an outgoing vice president that was running for president in law, like Al Gore. Al Gore was vice president for eight years, then ran for president. Okay, well, and, and he lost. Time. And his job was to read the electoral college in front of the Senate. And I will say this about Al Gore: he handled that with grace. Okay, because there was some 
you know, in fighting over Florida and what was going on with the ballots and stuff like that, the hanging chads, there was, you know, and there were court cases. And Al Gore handled that with grace. Um, he didn't put the country through, you know, craziness. All right. And so, you know, you give him some props there. I don't get many to the Al Gore. So there you go. Yeah. Don't you need, like, Three-fourths of the Senate to get a lot of things done, though? 60 votes. 60. Yeah, which is... So a, then what would, a, like, a 50-50 break in the tie do? Okay, so, like, on, a, like, a reconciliation, this is what we're going to be hearing a lot with this a human infrastructure bill, okay? And the filibuster. Okay, I will get into this promise, Lily. I will get into this uh, in the next two days. Okay? okay. Yeah. Okay. Um... That's a can of worms I can't open and not stop. Okay. All right. So we got the vice president. The next position of leadership we're going to talk about is the Senate president pro tempore. The Senate president pro tempore. The longest serving, longest serving member of the majority party in the Senate, which was is Patrick Leahy. Okay. Patrick Leahy, he's not too bad of a dude. He's all right, you know. Um, and remember, uh, Ruby and uh, Oscar, Daniel Inouye, I was telling you about him. He was the Senate president for some point. Yeah. Of the majority party in the Senate. And so when we look at president, vice president, speaker, uh, Senate, President pro tempore, <coughs> Secretary of State, Treasury, Defense. This is the order of ascension to the presidency. So if, if these three people die, this person becomes president. If they're a U.S. citizen, they're not. You skip over. Me. Gotcha. Natural born U.S. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, so what do they have? What kind of powers does Patrick Leahy have? Really, guys? Not a lot. This position is ceremonial. Now, you can call him. Patrick Leahy, the presiding officer of the Senate. But he is not the equivalent to the Speaker. Again, but neither the Vice President nor the Pro Tem is equivalent of the Speaker. The next position we talk about is that is the Senate Majority Leader. Senate Majority Leader is the equivalent of the speaker in the Senate. And that's our lovely Chuck Schumer. I guess I've been watching these people for decades. Chuck Schumer's been in the Senate for decades. You understand? So I know these people. You know what I mean? And some of them are despicable. They will lie to your face. They will lie to the American people willingly, knowingly, for political purposes. So these people are despicable. The two things that I want to see from you. Look, Patrick Leahy, decent guy. Stenny Hoyer's a decent guy. Stenny Hoyer. Uh, Look, both of these parties can do that. Mitch McConnell. Don't get me started. No, I don't like Mitch McConnell. He looks sweet. Like a sweet old man? Yeah. Yeah. Now, listen. Is the bell ringing for a minute? Listen. Look at the smile. Listen. 
Let me, let, I want an equal opportunity criticism of both people in both parties, please. Okay. Barack Obama was elected in 2008, takes office in January 2009. Okay. Mitch McConnell is the Senate Majority Leader. No, he's, he's Senate Minority Leader. Two years later, he would become the Senate Majority Leader. But in 2008, 2009, Mitch McConnell takes to the floor after the election of the first African-American president in American history. And the first thing he says from the head of the Senate is, our job is to make Barack Obama a one-term president. And I'm like, okay, step back here for a minute. You may feel that and like, that's what you want to do. Of course, that's what you want to do. You're a Republican. He's a Democrat, right? But is that what you go out and say to the guy that just got elected? You're the leader of the other party in the Senate. <coughs> Don't you at least say, hey, we will look for common ground to work with this new president on. Congratulations, President Obama. It's just like, dude, come on. You're an idiot. Now, these two guys right here, Dick Durbin and Chuck Schumer, I think they're awful human beings. Okay? Nancy Pelosi is freaking one of the best speaker of the House. She is so good at her job. She is a great politician. Okay? No, I mean, seriously, like, she is really good at her job. As far as keeping the Democrats in line together and getting passage of laws through, Pelosi's really good at her job. I mean, she will go down, as political scientists look at this, and say Nancy Pelosi is one of the most powerful speakers of the House in the history of the country. She was there when Obamacare died. Okay? She is seeing, she's going to maybe see this between the human infrastructure and the infrastructure, 3.3, the largest spending bills in, in American history. Okay, if she can get that through a razor thin Congress, she's freaking good at her job. Okay, now you can look at you know her policies and her personality and what she does in her private life, and you can judge her for that. But she's good at her job. Um, does she lie? They all lie. They all lie. Okay, some are just <coughs> more serial liars than others. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think both parties could do better. You know what I mean? I, I really do. I think Mitch McConnell, he's a dinosaur. He's good at his job, too. He really is. He's good at it. But, yeah, it's ugly. Why it's an that? ugly, ugly why swamp. Why do you think the other two are terrible human beings? Oh, jeez. I can't. I can't. I'm recording this. I, <laughs> Just send me around somebody. I mean, just lie. I mean, just it's it's so blatant and ugly. Um, I just want to go through the TV and choke them. <laughs> you know that's, what I mean? I just want to like, dude, really? Yeah, man. What? Yeah, what? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever, man. You know, I'm harmless. I'm not going to Washington or New York. Right? <laughs> <laughs> trying to make a point. All right. Uh, similar positions with minority leader and whips. Yes, in the Senate. Yes. They make the same amount of money as House members. Okay. Uh, so, although the, although the Senate is a more exclusive club, they don't get paid more. So, there. Representatives get paid more? No, they don't get paid more. They get paid the same. Sorry. Still doing my papers.